Okay, so this is the Because We Can Readathon tag video challenge. So, what I've done is I jumped onto both Twitter and Facebook and asked people to give me some numbers to find books. Those are my coordinates, so I have a whole pile of books here that I will use to tell my story. And then I have my laptop here to tell me what I'm doing. So like I said, this is the Because We Can Readathon tag created by the Readathon hosts, Kat, Kat and Jenna. They've put so much effort into this tag. It is just amazing. There are 18 prompts and you have to have 18 books and then you go through and you find what's going to happen and it tells a little story about a journey that you go on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through each prompt. I'm going to find the book and then I will tell you what that means for me. So could take a little while to do this tag but hopefully it's going to be a bit of fun. So without further ado let's get going on our journey. Okay so the first prompt says you are about to embark on your first ever solo trip. You've booked a tour and couldn't be more excited. Find a book using your coordinates and where the book is set is your travel destination. So using my coordinates. First book that I have here is The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis, which is the fifth book in the Chronicles, no, sixth book in the Chronicles of Narnia, which means that my travel destination is Narnia. So there you go, I'm going to Narnia. Prompt number two, the tour company sent you a list of what to pack with your itinerary. Using your coordinates, find a book and the first item you see is the first thing on the list. So we are going to look in American Gods by Neil Gaiman. So let's see, what are we taking with us? So <laughs> the first actual item in this book is a Songbirds of North America calendar. So that is what I am taking with me on my trip. Can't imagine how that would be particularly helpful given that time works very differently in Narnia, but anyway, that's the first thing I'm taking with me. So there you go. Thanks, Neil Gaiman. Prompt number three, your parents drop you off at the airport. Oh, isn't that nice of them? You can tell they are a little nervous about letting you go. And then your mum starts to cry. My mum's used to it by now. She wouldn't cry, but I see the point. Using your coordinates, flip the page Flip the book to the page number. Using your coordinates, flip to the page number and find the first line of dialogue you see, what you say to reassure your parents that they're okay. Oh, so I have to use coordinates to find the page number. So I only use, got coordinates for books, but that's okay. This book is number three, so page three, Paragraphs 1, line 16, and we are using The Style of Sea by Erin Morgenstern. So I guess we just go to page 1, and uh, page 3, and see what our first line of dialogue is. Tell me a story. Is the first line of dialogue would calm me down. My mum and dad have done a fair bit of travel themselves, so maybe they can tell me a story about some travel they've done themselves, and that'll make them feel better. Anyway. Tell me a story is what I say to my mum. So it does say the next prompt, you've managed to calm your mum down and your parents have left you to begin your grand adventure. You pass through security but your bag is flagged by the guard. Find a book using your coordinates and the first item you see is what the guards are confiscating. So we are using Small Gods by Terry Pratchett which is a Discworld series book. And let's see, the first item. Well, the first thing is, the first line says, consider the tortoise and the eagle. So I guess they are confiscating a tortoise. So there you go. Very bad of me. Apparently I wanted to take my pet tortoise on holiday with me. Okay, so next prompt. Ticket in hand, you finally made it onto the plane. And bargain, you have a window seat. Yes. The flight attendant comes around to offer you dinner. Using your coordinates, flip to the page number and the first item of food you see is what you are having. If there isn't food on the page, the first item you see is what you're given instead. So for this one, we are using Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So let's see. So there's actually no food 
on page four of this book. The first item is an ink bottle. So apparently they gave me an ink bottle, which I'm not looking forward to trying to eat. <laughs> I'm having an interesting journey so far. Question number six. Surprisingly, you actually managed to fall asleep on the plane and when you wake up, it's defined you've finally arrived. You gather your bags and head out the front to meet your tour guide. Find a book using your coordinates and the first person you see is who's picking you up. So the first, the book for that one is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. So the first person in this book, I have a horrible feeling, is not going to be a very nice person. Well, the first person is actually a picture and it's this one and it says, The man Jack paused on the landing. And from memory, he's not a very nice person, but there you go. This guy here is my tour guide. <laughs> Number seven. You're on the bus now and you can't wait to start sightseeing. Using your coordinates, the first place you see is the first stop of the tour. So the next book is Foot Rot Flats, <laughs> Weekender number four. So the first place we see, well, is this beach, which I think kind of works out for Narnia because there is coastline in Narnia, so it looks pretty nice. So there you go. That's the first stop on the tour. Number eight. It's been a few days and you've never taken so many breathtaking sights before. It's late and you finally arrived at your hotel for the evening. Only for your tour guide to tell you that there has been a mix-up and instead of your room being a twin, there is only one bed and you will have to share. Find a book using your coordinates and the first person you see is who you are sharing, who you are sharing with. So the book that I found was Private London by James Patterson and Mark Pearson. This is a thriller so this could be interesting. A person called Hannah Shapiro and I have not read this book so I actually have no idea what that means but someone called Hannah Shapiro is sharing the bed with me so there you go. Number nine. The both of you are lying in bed together and it's pretty awkward. Yeah. You know you should say something to ease the tension but you aren't sure what. Using your coordinates, flip to the page number and the first piece of dialogue you see is your opening line. The book that we are using is Cheese Sweet Adventure number four. And the first line of dialogue in, we have to go to page number four. <laughs> Cheese stuffed. Don't know anything about Hannah Shapiro, so I know to idea what she'll think of that. But according to prompt number 10, apparently she said it, she finds it funny. It says, your bedmate found you to be hilarious and the two of you stayed up late talking. You stayed up so late that you overslept and by the time you wake up, the tour bus has already left. The two of you decide, decide, even without the rest of the group, you don't want to miss a whole day's worth of sightseeing. So you decide to head out together. Find a book using your coordinates and the first place you see is where you're heading. So apparently we are now going from Narnia to Middle Earth because the next book is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien and the first place that we see I'm going to think say is probably going to be Bag End. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Not a nasty dirty wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell nor yet a dry bare sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole and that means comfort and yes this is Bag End. So we are going to Bag End. I'm okay with that. I hope Hannah is too. Prompt 11. You head to the city's biggest attraction, hoping that maybe the tour group is there, only to find it strangely deserted. You notice some weird carvings on the ground and reach out to touch them. This turns out to be a mistake, as you soon realise you have just awoken an angry god. Using your coordinates, flip to the page number, the first person you see who's, is who you've awoken. Okay. So the... The book that I'm now using is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston and I have to go to page number four I think. Yes, page number four. The first person is Alex. So Alex from Red, White and Royal Blue is an angry god in this particular story. So that was an interesting turn of events especially given that some of these books actually contain gods. But nope, it's Alex from Red, White and Royal Blue. There you go. Prompt 12. 
The god rounds on your newfound friend and you have an overwhelming urge to protect them despite having no fighting skills whatever. You need to find a weapon and fast. Find a book using your coordinates and the first item you see is what you are defending yourself with. So now we are actually going to use Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama which is I believe a memoir by Barack Obama the former president of the United States for those that have been living in a hole recently. All right so the first person I see the first thing I see is going to defend me. The first item is a buzzer like a doorbell so that's what I'm going to use to defend myself. Thanks Barack. Against all the odds you succeed in killing the god with a doorbell. <laughs> Ah, and your new friend is overcome with gratitude and pledges their love for you. Well, that was nice of her. Unfortunately, the locals are less than impressed that you've just killed one of their oldest deities and you are promptly arrested. Oh dear. The authorities tell you that you can have one phone call to get help. Using your coordinates, flip to the page number and the first person you see is who you are calling. Oh dear. So it says the page number, which is page number... 25. All right. So this is actually a series of books. This is the Alan Garner Omnibus. So another book I've not read. Some of these books are Rowan's. So let's see. Page 25. First person I see. Roland. But because I don't know anything about this book, I don't really know anything about what that will mean. I think Roland might be a relatively young child. So there you go. Roland is going to help me out. <laughs> All right, so prompt 14. Your friend is impressed that you are still alive after an encounter like that and agrees to get you out of jail. Thanks, Roland. They neglect to mention, however, how they are planning on doing it. Your partner starts to worry and you decide very quickly to, to very quickly calm them down by telling them a joke. Find a book using your coordinates and the first dialogue you see is the joke you tell. All right, so we are going to be using North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, so the first dialogue in this book, this is another book I've not read. Yep, I really do need a my own TBR shelf, I think. But anyway, that's where we are. First line of dialogue is just someone saying, Edith, Edith. I hope that Hannah finds that very funny. It doesn't say, but it does say, your friend was true to their word and soon enough you're out of jail. But they weren't exactly legal about it and now you're on the run. Both you and your partner now need a new identity. Using your coordinates, flip to the page number and the first two names you see are your new identities. So for this we are using The Binding by Bridget Collins. So it's in first person and of course it doesn't actually say any names. So I'm going to go to the page beforehand. So we have Emmett and we have Alta. So I will be Emmett and Hannah will be Alta. So there you go. So the next prompt says, since you are now a wanted criminal, you don't want to put your family in danger and accept that you can probably never go home again. Find a book using your coordinates and the setting of the book will be your new place of residence. So the next book we have is Malambimbi by Melissa Lukashenko, which means that we are going to move to Malambimbi, which is in the northern part of New South Wales in Australia. Um, given that our crime apparently took place in Middle Earth, that's probably a pretty good place to hide out. So um, Emmett and Alter are moving to Malambimbi. Prompt number 17. After an eventful first trip that you will never forget, you and your partner have finally settled down and are beginning to make a new life together. Your partner tells you that you've got a surprise, they, that they've got a surprise and tells you to close your eyes. When you cut open them, you see they have given you a souvenir of your travels. Use your coordinates, flip to the page number and the first item you see is what you were given. Oh dear. So it's Deadly Decisions by Kathy Rikes. So I'm not sure how we're going to go. But uh, let's see what we come up with. And I didn't actually get a page number for this, so I'm just going to go to the first page. A semi-automatic. <laughs> well, thanks, um, Alta, <laughs> as you are now known. Semi-automatic sounds just amazing and not at all illegal in Australia. Oops. <laughs> 
didn't actually get enough books somehow. So I think I'm going to go back to the very beginning and start over again. So I'll just grab that book. And that was The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis. All right, so it says, final prompt, it's a few months later and things have finally settled down to the point where you think it is safe to leave an anonymous reviewer review on the two... Let me start again. It's a few months later and things have finally settled down to the point where you think it is safe to leave an anonymous review of the tour you took on the tour company's website, mainly to warn people of what could occur if you miss the bus. Find a book using your coordinates and the first line of dialogue you see is your review. So, let's see. Can't you look where you're going? I mean, given everything that happened to us, I feel like that could potentially be an appropriate thing to say. Can't you look where you're going? <laughs> or maybe just a very strange thing to say in a Yelp review. So, there you have it. We battled a son of the President of the United States because he was God. We became new people, went to Narnia, we went to Middle Earth, and we're back in Australia again. So, all round, a interesting journey. So there we go guys, that was my because we can't travel tag for the because we can readathon. I had a great deal of fun doing this challenge. I thought that it was really clever and really funny and some of the things that I came up with were pretty silly and crazy so I'm really really happy with that. In the comments below let me know what you thought of my crazy adventure. If you are doing this tag, please comment below as well and let me know that because I'd love to check it out wherever it is that you do the tag, whether it's booktube or a blog or whatever. If you are watching this video and you want to leave a comment but you don't really know what to say, please do leave an emoji. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.